Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Somos Biology. In this video, we are going to talk about exotoxins. In the last lecture, we have talked about endotoxins. Now here I am going to tell you what are exotoxins, what are their components, what is their structure, how exotoxins work, what are their mode of actions and we are also going to talk about different exotoxin mode of action as a separate entity of lectures in the upcoming times. So let's start talking about exotoxins. And also I'll guide you uh, the difference between endotoxin and exotoxin in a, a nutshell. So exotoxins, as the name suggests, exo means uh, the exogenous origin of the toxin. While endotoxin is a part of bacterial cell, gram-negative bacterial lipopolysaccharide layer, the outermost layer, that was exo endotoxin. But exotoxin is something that is produced by a bacteria, which is released, which can be released, it can be released by bacteria. Either it can be gram positive bacteria or gram negative bacteria. Okay, Both of them can produce and release the exotoxin outside. And to release exotoxin, this, this bacteria may live. They don't need to die in order to release the toxin. While in case of endotoxin, endotoxin is only activated while the bacteria is dead and the components of the cell membrane, outer membrane of bacteria is floating in the environment. That is one fundamental difference between endotoxin and exotoxin. So in exotoxin, we know that if this is a bacteria that want to produce the exotoxin, it produces exotoxin inside a sac, inside the bacterial cell. And let's say these green color sections are exotoxins. And then upon fusion, this exotoxin can be released out. And once these exotoxins are released, they are very, very specific very specific in uh, in terms of their function why because their interaction to the receptor or host receptor is very specific lock and key binding for example uh, if i if i give you the example of let's say diphtheria toxin okay diphtheria toxin just a second if i give you an example of diphtheria toxin the receptor the diphtheria toxin bind to is the heparin binding epidermal growth factor. So a particular receptor that is present on the surface of our eukaryotic cell that is known as heparin binding epidermal growth factor receptor. This is the receptor where the diphtheria toxin binds to and this binding is no no on any other place. So diphtheria toxin will not bind to any other cell surface. It will bind to only the cell surface with heparin binding and epithelial uh, growth factor receptor. Second example if I am going to give is the second example. Let us say it is cholera toxin. Cholera toxin always bind to gangliocide GM1 receptor. Gangliocide receptor is the receptor where the cholera toxin binds okay so these are specific binding and this toxins these exotoxins have a specificity of their receptor binding because it carries two parts to it so these exotoxins are often referred to as bipartite toxin bipartite bipartite toxin why because it has two components to it. Bi means two, two components. One is the B component, another one is the A component. Both these components are made with proteins. Remember, so the major constituent of an exotoxin is protein. While the constituent of endotoxin was lipid and polysaccharide. But in case of exotoxins, solely made with proteins. Both B and A subunits are made with proteins, but they have different roles to play. So for example, B has a role to play. What kind of role? Binding. The role of binding. And A has a role to play of activation. And the action, or you can say action. The actual action to the cell will be done by A unit, but B does the job of binding. It is very important that the B is remain associated to A before the A is released inside the host cell. B's job is to escort the A part or the active part of the exotoxin to the host cell. 
it will introduce it to the host cell and then it will do the damage and you know these toxins are nothing but they are virulent factors right virulent factor of bacteria right so exotoxin is the example of virulent factor of bacteria so this a they have different target as their damage different sorts of uh, target they can choose so they can choose a particular cell for damage or they can choose intestinal cells for damage or they can choose nerve cell for damage these are three examples i am going to tell you so if they choose uh, any other random body cells uh, somatic cells of our body then we call them cytotoxin if their target is intestinal cells we call them enterotoxin or enterotoxin and if their target is nerve we call them neurotoxin cytotoxin enterotoxin neurotoxin and i'll give you example of each of this kind cytotoxin example diphtheria toxin in enterotoxin example is cholera toxin neurotoxin example is botulinum toxin as well as tetanus toxin okay these are the four different types of toxin and their mechanism of action that we need to understand we need to know if you are in a csr net preparation icmr preparation or uh, you are mbbs preparation this is a very very important the dip diphtheria toxin mechanism of action cholera toxin botulinum toxin and tetanus toxin mode of actions you need to understand this very clearly okay so we know that the bipartite toxin how exactly bipartite toxin works i'll give you a simple idea here let's imagine that this is the cell and this is our target cell okay and let's say diphtheria toxin on top of it we have the receptor okay uh, epidermal growth factor okay so this is the receptor and where the toxin will bind so here we have two subunit we have b subunit and we have A subunit associated to it, like this. So our bipartite toxin, exotoxin, which is a cytotoxin here, binds to the specific receptor. This is specific binding, specific binding, very very specific. And then internalization will be done. How exactly internalization will be done? Something like this. And what we have here, we have B, and we have A connected to it. like this and then in the cell after the fusion of lysosome and all uh, there will be segregation of b subunit from the a subunit and the a subunit will be released in the cell this is a subunit which is released to the cell and now this a subunit will start its action whatever mechanism of action this a subunit will follow will ultimately cause for example it can stop or so let's say stop protein synthesis in case of diphtheria toxin it prevents the transpeptidation reaction and also the the translocation of ribosome uh, along the mrna so thus preventing the protein synthesis elongation thus preventing the protein synthesis no protein synthesis as a result slowly the cell will lack the protein for survival and the cell will die okay so the toxins are always released by bacteria in order to protect themselves in order to kill the host okay both these things are achieved by the toxins toxins are one kind of virulent factors that are damaging to the host there are different virulence factors released by bacteria some of them are only to protect bacteria themselves but this is one example which hurts the host cell a lot both endotoxin and exotoxin hurt but here the mechanism for exotoxin is different for different types of toxins okay so here the mode of action is simple the cellular death in case of uh, the neurotoxins like botulinum toxin it causes flaccid paralysis in case of tetanus toxin so remember like i am writing it out botulinum toxin causing flaccid paralysis okay then we have tetanus toxin that can cause spastic paralysis both are opposite flaccid means your muscles and like they will be very much relaxed they will not be contracting and in case of spastic paralysis in tetanus it will be always the muscle spasm is present always so that is tetanus toxin we have uh, cholera toxin causes severe 
वाटरी डायरिया ब्लडी डायरिया दैट कॉज सेवियर सेवियर डिहाइड्रेशन ओके दिस इज फॉर द कॉलेरा टॉक्सिन नाउ इफ यू वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड मोर अबाउट ऑल दिस डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ टॉक्सिन बोटोलिनम टॉक्सिन टेटनस टॉक्सिन और कॉलेरा टॉक्सिन आई वॉन्ट यू टू गो थ्रू द लेक्चर्स ऑफ दिस सीरीज द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर विल बी बेस्ड ऑन द बोटोलिनम टॉक्सिन मैकेजम एक्शन विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट कॉलेरा एज वेल एज डिथेरिया टॉक्सिन एज वेल सो आई वॉन्ट यू टू गो थ्रू दोज लेक्चर्स टू गेव गेट अ क्लियर आइडिया अबाउट इट बट रिमेंबर वन थिंग एज दिस टॉक्सिन हैव टू सेपरेट यूनिट्स ए एंड बी एंड वी नो बी यूनिट्स इज वेरी स्पेसिफिक टू बाइंड टू टारगेट सेल रिसेप्टर्स वी कैन मॉडिफाई दिस टॉक्सिन एंड वी कैन यूटिलाइज ओनली द बी यूनिट ऑफ दिस एक्सोटॉक्सिन इन ऑर्डर टू टारगेट एनी मेडिसिन और एनी प्रोटीन पर्टिकुलरली और डिस्टेंट सेल with the help of this mechanism so modification is something that can be done with the bipartite nature of exotoxins utilizing the bipartite nature of the exotoxins and we can utilize them on the other hand uh, we can modify this toxins to help us for example the botulinum toxin if we take the immunogenic part of the toxins out of the effect between a and b but we can still utilize the toxicity part of the toxin can be out removed and we can only utilize the toxin to to achieve a particular goal of causing the skin wrinkling to be reversed to a normal clean growing skin and that can be done with botulinum toxin as a botulinum injection okay so these modifications are quite common quite possible in case of this bipartite toxin but these toxins are very potent no doubt about it but the modifications are also possible so so the the modifications are limitless and we are trying to achieve our goal with the help of these modifications and uh, if we compare these exotoxins to that of endotoxins i can tell you one thing that these exotoxins are far more toxic than endotoxins they are far more potent than endotoxins and they can be converted to toxoid means basically if we treat these exotoxins with uh, some chemical agents like formaldehyde at a particular temperature we can change the behavior of this toxin from highly toxic to moderate and less toxic form which we can utilize and modify according to our needs so toxoid formation is possible for exotoxins which is not possible in case of endotoxins okay so these are some properties that you must know about exotoxins i believe you have a clear idea about the exotoxins uh, with this particular lecture If you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye